Welcome back to Free Media, I'm Robbie Suave. And I'm Amber Duke. Dr. Anthony Fauci and frequent foe Jim Jordan squared off again on Capitol Hill this week, with Jordan grilling Fauci on steps he took to downplay possible lab origins of COVID-19. Do you agree that there was a push to downplay the lab leak theory? Not on my part. Really? Really? Wow. Wow. I think, I think most of the country would find that, find that amazing. I still got 11 seconds. We got well, look at the facts. I've kept an open mind throughout the entire process. All right, I yield back. Later on that day, when catching up with Dr. Fauci, CNN's Caitlin Collins asked him point blank whether he believes COVID came from animal crossover or a lab, but not before she heaped tons of criticism on how Republicans conducted the hearing. They were responding to it. And obviously that hearing room was not the haven for what it was supposed to be about, the genuine dialogue about, you know, how the government handled COVID-19, how to be better prepared for the next inevitable pandemic. And so I do want to ask you about that tonight. And I do wonder, do you still believe that the evidence that you've seen does point to COVID originating from animals as opposed to by humans in a lab? You know, Caitlin, as I said at the hearing and then the transcribed interview, you have to keep an open mind since there is no definitive proof one way or the other. It's one or the other. When I look at the scientific evidence, I don't see any evidence that's concrete at all that it's a lab leak, even though a lot of people talk about it. I still think it's a possibility, but I haven't seen any evidence where there is reasonably good evidence, not definitive, that is suggestive, strongly suggestive, that it came from a natural reservoir of an animal jumping into humans. Interesting that he says there's not good evidence. Obviously, there are people, and he kind of acknowledged that, who very much disagree. The New York Times, to its cr tremendous credit, ran a great um, opinion piece by Dr. Alina Chan, who's a molecular biologist that I've spoken with on Rising many times in the past. Uh, her laying out the case, you know, like five big reasons. They provided these really cool looking graphics for it. I encourage everyone to check it out for why she thinks the lab leak um, is more likely, in, which includes the, you know, the, uh, the genetic sequencing of the virus looks manipulated to her. Um, the fact that in all of these, in the other cases of uh, viral outbreaks that did come from animals, um, very quickly the uh, the the transfer animal was found. Animals that had the antibodies of the virus had been found. None of that was found in this case, even though um, science has advanced. It should have been easier to find all of that. Yeah, we don't know, you know, for sure, and uh, and and it, it's totally fine to say both avenues should both should still be pursued and in fact steps should be taken to stop future outbreaks in both lab virus facilities and in uh, markets where animals are kept in like horrific disgusting gross conditions but him saying he never put his thumbs on the scale is just blatantly blatantly false he sent an email to christian anderson who was the head of scripps research which is this top obviously medical community, and he uh, asked him to write a, an article downplaying the lab leak theory in favor of the animal origin. And then, what, a week, two weeks later, he gave him $7 million in grant funding? I mean, and, and there were emails between Fauci and all of his, uh, his, the people who worked beneath him, his employees, discussing the, the problems that might emerge if people started talking about a lab leak origin and how they needed to make sure that those didn't get too far away. He publicly blasted people along with people he worked with, publicly blasted people, including the president who brought up this idea as conspiracy theorists. And one sort of underreported part of this whole story is that Anthony Fauci was on a phone call with one of the top executives, it might have been the CEO himself, at Evergrande, which is a CCP-owned company. It's now out of business, was a massive uh, real estate firm. And they had promised to give Harvard Medical School a massive, like tens of millions of dollars donation. Um, and he was on this phone call with the head of Harvard Medical School. And then conveniently, it was two days later that he was sending these mm. emails talking about how they needed to downplay the lab leak theory. Now, the money from Evergrande, by the way, never actually made its way to Harvard Medical School. They reneged on the deal, which could be why now people are, are more willing to talk about the lab leak theory. Well, And we've seen the emails now. Like, he can't claim he was neutral. We've seen um, how many 
people who are knowledgeable about the kind of research that was being conducted at Wuhan, who were involved in the grant making process, who were familiar with Eco Health Alliance, Peter Daszak, you know, these kinds of names are becoming household names. These people, when COVID happened, said, holy SHIT, this looks like it could have been us and had complained, had raised red flags about the safety standards in China. The grants were structured in a way to disguise from health regulators in the U.S. that they were going to be done in China under safety uh, standards that were not uh, up, to, up, to, up to snuff. So, so like you, you can't say that those signs um, weren't there. And then somehow, because of the way the media covered this, the most ridiculous thing that has ever happened, I'm only mildly exaggerating with that, came to pass, where people who thought it emerged from a lab were said that were that was a racist conspiracy theory against the Chinese in favor of COVID came out of animals following very specific Chinese cultural practices. You know, they eat disgusting, gross animals. They eat pangolins and that and was the non-racist answer. Again, rather than the explanation in which China and the U.S. are at fault, in which they, they, the Chinese, not, and not the Chinese people, the Chinese government and Chinese research using money from American scientists and the American tax po uh, taxpayers had a horrific accident that ended up killing millions of people worldwide. That's on one hand, and the other hand, they just can't stop eating bats, those Chinese people. That was supposed to be the non-racist answer. It makes no sense. It's just totally insane. And the media forced that on it. They really did. They, so many uh, mainstream reporters, including the New York Times, um, most uh, most pivotal health reporter, Apoorva Mandavili, you know, tweeting, someday we will should probe the racist origins of the lab leak conspiracy theory. You know, contrast that with, again, today, the New York Times, huge column on why that's the more likely explanation, which the energy department agrees with and the FBI agrees with and the former head of the CDC agrees with. Like, it's just, it's not a fringe theory. And, and now it is not being treated as a fringe theory. But man, that was a crazy two-year period. It was. And outside of all of the guardrails that obviously need to be implemented in order to prevent something like this happening again, uh, the Biden administration, of course, has put a pause on funding for the Eco Health Alliance, which is sort of the bare minimum of what yeah. you should do in this scenario. Yeah. But Dr. And Fauci Obama had Obama had outlawed it during his time in office. And now Fauci said, oh, but look at all these nice little exceptions we can sign off exactly. on. Exactly. And uh, Dr. Fauci has repeatedly quibbled with Congress over the definition of gain-of-function research. So the last time that he appeared was one of the reasons why people say he should be prosecuted for perjury because he said, no, 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 we weren't funding gain of function research. And then you actually read the details of the grant and it's like, oh yeah, that's actually gain of function research. But he's taking issue with the definition of it. This time around, he didn't even get into what he thinks his definition is versus what the Congress's definition is or what was actually happening at the Wuhan Institute of Virology. Instead, he says it wasn't worth people's time to get into the details of what gain of function research actually is, which is oh, a I have really, time. yeah. I have time. It's a really, all the time we have the all the time. <laughs> it's such a convenient way for him to obviously yeah. punt on any responsibility for this. Um, it's just, yeah. he's so loathsome. <laughs> he's truly so loathsome. But if there's gonna be legal accountability for him, it, it needs to be along these lines. And I, so I hope Republicans and, and Democrats, again, that this is nothing partisan about this research and like scrutiny of top scientists is not remotely a party issue. And there are many Democrats concerned about it as well. We don't need to make it a, a, a right versus left or Republican versus Democratic thing. But you know, as much as I disagree with his mass guidance and his lockdown policy. I mean, that was just policy. I don't think he can be held accountable for that, except in the realm of public opinion. But if he lied to Congress, yeah, he can't be held accountable. Yeah, and we should take his pension away. And I mean, one more point on this is that for him talking about how he's not responsible for the pandemic, I will say in that vein, the CDC and Fauci's uh, uh, part of that NIAID, they did actually contribute to the slow response by the United States in figuring out the origin of the virus because of their uh, passion with which they sought to downplay the lab yeah. leak theory. We didn't get into China in quickly enough in order to investigate the origins. So now we will never know. We can never know now because we took too long to get in there because we were too worried about potentially upsetting the Chinese Communist well, Party. I want to know, the Wall Street Journal and um, other outlets have reported that the first three people to get sick with COVID-like symptoms were scientists at the, the lab, right? 
if the U.S. I, I wonder if this was why, like, the Energy Department has made this conclusion that they have intelligence that that was accurate. If we do get that intelligence, and again, I don't know why it's being kept uh, hidden from the American public. Bipartisan Congress signed by Biden said decriminalize the COVID um, origins investigation info, and that caused our. Uh, uh, and instead, the government put out like a little little summary of things you already know. No, I want to know. Do we have evidence that it was a scientist who got sick? Because that would be a smoking gun. Yeah, and I think the State Department looked into that too because I remember yeah. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo saying something along those lines. Yeah. But probably. I want to know. Well, of course. I want to know. I don't, I don't take their <laughs> word for it. I want to see the intelligence. Absolutely. I want to decide for myself. All right, more free media right after this.